Switch me on. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Proton Pack It's Not a Toy. My name is Matt and this is the introduction to a new video series that I plan to do for my Ghostbusters 2 Proton Pack. I've got the itch to build. Stuff isn't coming in as fast as I'd like for the Max Factory Proton Pack that I've been saving up for. And so with that being the case, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time and energy and a little bit of money into making some conversion changes to my fully built Ghostbusters 2 Proton Pack. Uh, if you saw the Clippered Valve uh, swap out video that I did, you know that I've made the change at least on those to make it reflect the Vinkman Hero Pack from Ghostbusters 2. And so I've decided let's go a little bit further and make more changes to replicate that pack. Now when I'm done, it won't be a complete accurate replica of it. It's gonna be influenced by a lot of the aspects of the Vinkman Hero from Ghostbusters 2, but it won't be a one-to-one -one replica. I'm gonna take a, a few licenses on things that I wanna do with it, but I have made a list of uh, over 20 things that I can do to this pack to make it more accurate to what we see on screen for the Vinkman Hero in Ghostbusters 2. So, I'm going to call this series the Vinkman Conversion. Um, Peter Conversion sounded a little bit inappropriate, so we're going with the Vinkman Conversion. And I'm um, not going to give you the whole list of everything that I'm going to do up front. I do have a few surprises and a few things that I want to throw out there uh, as the weeks go along. And I'm not going to be doing this as a quick project. This isn't something that's going to be done in a couple of weeks time. This is something where I'll probably post a new video once a week, maybe twice a week. And of the 20 plus changes I wanna do, I won't do more than like two or three per video. Uh, some of them will just be one change per video because they're a big undertaking. And on this video, I'll make one change just because I'm trying to introduce the concept here. So, um, Hope that you'll be interested in the changes that I do make, and uh, as I go along, I plan to explain why I'm making certain changes. I'll show reference pictures for not only the Vinkman Hero pack, but also for uh, the other packs, uh, some of the ones that this one was intended to replicate before, and show you the reasons I'm going from one to the other. Now, why am I going to switch over to the Vinkman Hero from Ghostbusters 2? A few reasons. Uh, number one, as I said already, I've already moved the clipper valves around to match the Vinkman Hero. Um, another reason is we have a whole lot of reference photos. It's one of the packs that has the most information where we can see up close from multiple angles so that I can see accurately some of the changes that uh, need to be made to this pack without ha having to dig very far. And so I'll have a lot of pictures from uh, the Ghostbusters reference library that I'll share up here as well as I make these changes. And then uh, another reason is it's an interesting proton pack because by the time Ghostbusters 2 came around, the Vinkman hero pack from the first movie is the one that they used to mold and create the semi-hero packs for Ghostbusters 2, and then they put it back together and used it as its own hero pack there in the movie. So this one has some details that uh, harken back to Ghostbusters uh, in 1984, and some that match what we see on screen with the semi-hero packs. And it's really the kind of the go-between uh, between those packs. And so I'll explain a lot of that as I go along in these videos, but um, that's the gist of it. And so today what I want to do is just a very small change. It's something that's not going to make a whole lot of difference, but it is a detail that I want to uh, make a difference on my pack. Uh, on this pack, um, you're not going to be able to see, but I'll move up close when I make the change here. The booster frame, um, underneath the 
socket head cap screws on the Vinkman Hero Pack in Ghostbusters 2, we see that it has some brass washers between the cap screws and the frame itself. These are pretty much exclusive to the Vinkman Hero and then the semi-hero packs from Ghostbusters 2. If you go back and you look at all the details and up-close shots that you can from the first Ghostbusters movie, I believe, if I'm wrong, correct me, but I believe that there are no washers on the other hero packs from the first movie. So um, that's a change that I'm going to make. I got these washers with the Max Factory booster frame that I bought for my Max Factory pack. That pack I'm planning to make a Ghostbusters 1 version of a Spingler Hero, which did not have these washers. So I'm borrowing these washers from that booster frame and then I'm just putting it on this old booster frame. I believe it's a Multimedia Mayhem one. Um, but just adding it on there because I'm not going to need them on that other build. So they're handy, they're available. So what I'm going to do now is move you guys up a little bit closer as I take the screws out and make the change and um, I'll finish up the video back at distance when I'm done. So see you in a second. So again, all I'm doing is taking out these screws. I'm going to do it one at a time so I don't have to take the frame all the way off. And then I'll put those washers on underneath. And like I said, I've got a a long list of things that I plan to change and um, some of the smaller things I will combo up into just you know two or three changes in, in one video at a time um, but um, there's some of them are going to involve me having to take the shell off of the motherboard but some of these are going to be the ones where I don't have to make changes with the motherboard with the uh, shell coming off. So um, I might do as many as I can before I have to take the shell off, and I have my list broken up into ones that I can changes that I can make. Um, with the shell intact on the motherboard and ones that I can make after I've taken it off. So I don't want to take the shell on and off every video. So um, there's really no problem with doing that. It's just the headache of doing so and uh, making sure that I get it back together and lined up right. Um, it just makes more sense to do as many as I can this way. As I'm taking this one off, I'm noticing something that I forgot. I have a silver washer on the one on the P-clamp there and that it's a little bit bigger and the brass washer that I'm putting on. Didn't remember that I had that on there. So that'll be kind of the fun of the process is of going through this and making some of the changes that I haven't made in years on uh, some of the decisions that I've made on this pack. Um, this booster frame itself is probably the oldest part that I have that's on this pack because I cobbled things together and made changes and it's been around since my first pack that was built out of foam core and uh, continues to be on here today. So I could probably change it out with a Max Factory one, but you know, um, it's kind of sentimental at this time, even if it's not as the most accurate one that I could get. So if you can see, I've got a little bit more color, a little bit more flair, it catches the light a little bit. And um, most importantly, it's something that matches the Vinkman Hero Pack from Ghostbusters 2 that um, that's going to be the goal of this pack going forward. 
So is that one little detail going to really be noticed by anybody unless it's being pointed out to them? Not really. But it's something that's accurate to that fact and that's what I'm going for. And it's something that I could do quickly in this introduction to the series. So I do have some things that are on order and things that I have already bought that I'm going to use to make these conversions on my pack. I'll show a couple of them off at this time. I've got a bunch of split loom that I'm going to replace the loom on my pack. Um, the one that I have now is the splitless kind. It doesn't make as much crinkly noise as the split loom does. Uh, I did have some split loom on my first pack and it did crinkle up and make a little bit of racket, but uh, to be more accurate, then you need to have the split loom on there. I did stare at the split loom on the actual proton pack that I'm trying to replicate, and it has um, electric tape on there in multiple different places. And so I went to the detail of counting the little ribs in between the spots where the electric tape is wrapped. And I plan to go to the detail of having the same kind of measurements uh, of ribs in between the, um, the tape on the loom when I get to that video in the series. Again, it won't be the next one. Also, I did score a LC1 frame and that's gonna replace the LC2 frame that I have on there. And again, that will be a big video and that's gonna take a lot of work. And so that will be one of the ones that there won't be multiple changes. That one may even be a two-part video, depending on how long it takes. And there are other things on the way that I don't want to spoil at this point. But like I said, uh, hopefully this will be a weekly series. I can't guarantee it, but that's my intention as I'm starting out. And if you're interested in following along, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I uh, appreciate any likes and shares for these videos that you're willing to put out there. And as always, I appreciate you watching the videos and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day.